Welcome to SPT online classes and today we are going to take the topic which is gravitation. To be precise the connection between gravity, Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein. So the motion of celestial bodies such as the moon, the earth, planets have been a great interest for a long time. The famous Indian astronomer and mathematician like Aryabhata who studied the motions in great detail wrote his conclusions in his book Aryabhatiya. We know that. Later after thousand years Tycho Brahe along with Jonas Kepler brought more information, great details to the concept of gravitation. Kepler formulated the important findings in his three laws of planetary motion. And which are they? The first one, all planets move in elliptical orbits with the sun at a focus. Second one, the radius vector from the sun to the planet sweeps equal area in equal intervals of time. And three, the square of the time period of a planet is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis of the ellipse. Here in this simulation you can see that the sun, earth, moon system revolving around the sun. It's slightly elliptical what you can exactly see the edges of that orbit. It's not a perfect circle because that's why I showed you the grid where you can exactly calculate whether it is a circle or an ellipse. Then came the famous scientist Isaac Newton. So let's get into Isaac Newton. The year 1665 was a very fruitful year for Isaac Newton. By that time, lot of informations were already known, like the time period which is required for the moon to complete the earth for one revolution, the distance between the moon and the earth the centripetal acceleration formula, all these things were already known. From that, Isaac Newton formulated, he predicted, he made some wild guesses to calculate or to formulate the gravitational formula. So the value for the time period required for the moon to revolve around the earth is 27.3 days. The radius or the distance between the moon and the earth is 3.85 into 10 to the power 5 kilometers. The centripetal acceleration formula is A equal to omega square r. We know omega equal to 2 pi by t. So substituting that value you get 2 pi by t square r. You can substitute the time period value. You can substitute the distance and thus you will come to a conclusion of acceleration that is the centripetal acceleration for the moon towards the earth which is 0 0.0027 meter per second square okay now we know that the acceleration for an apple to fall towards the earth it is 9.8 meter per second square so let me write like this acceleration of an apple towards the earth is 9.8 meter per second square and the centripetal acceleration for the moon towards the earth we already calculated that value which is 0 0.0027 meter per second square okay so what will you get the ratio the ratio you will get a value which is 3600 the next thing is that we are going to calculate the ratio between the distance of the moon from the earth so let me write distance of moon from the earth okay divided by divided by distance of the apple from the earth and distance of apple from the earth distance of apple from earth and we know the numerator part which is our 3.85 into 10 to the power 5 kilometers and definitely we know the denominator part which is also which is 6400 kilometers 
considering the radius of the earth you get the value or the fraction you get it as 60 okay now we know that the acceleration of the apple towards the earth divided by acceleration to of the moon towards the earth the value is 3600 so which is equal to you can find it out the distance of the moon from the earth distance of the moon from the earth to the distance of the apple from the earth square this is what we are getting a conclusion understood so we came to a conclusion not we uh, actually isaac newton came to a conclusion that acceleration is inversely proportional to the square of the distance okay why it is so because you can see the acceleration of the apple in the numerator on one side and the distance of the apple towards the center of the earth which is in the denominator on the other side so this acceleration is inversely proportional to the square of the distance at that time itself newton has formulated the force theorem which is force equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity thus he came to a conclusion which is force is directly proportional to mass of the moon and the square of the distance inversely proportional to square of the distance so according to the newton's third law of motion every action is having equal and opposite reaction which means imagine this is the earth and this is the moon the force which is acting on the moon by the earth okay let me name it as that f 1 2 and the force acting on the earth by the moon okay let me name it as f 2 1 these two forces are equal and opposite definitely they are vectors so f12 is equal and opposite to minus f21 that means at whatever force the earth is pulling the moon in the same force the moon is pulling the earth and whatever force the earth is pulling the apple from the tree in the same force with the same force the apple is also pulling the earth but we are seeing the apple falling to the earth the reason is because the earth has got the higher mass so we cannot simply write small m alone which is the mass of the moon which we have considered over here because the acceleration is the centripetal acceleration of the moon towards the earth so mass we have to consider is the mass of the moon which is small m but we cannot write that term alone we have to consider the mass of the earth because that is the third law saying so the proportionality should go for the mass of the earth also thus it becomes f proportional to capital m into small m by r square from which you can derive the gravitational constant universal gravitational constant which is f equal to g times capital m small m divided by r square from which you get the value of capital G which is equal to 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 Newton meter square divided by kilogram square which is the unit of the universal gravitational constant this Isaac Newton formulated the fundamental law of gravitation or the universal law of gravitation but then comes the second person after so many years after so many years who is albert einstein so albert einstein formulated another theory in the year 1915 so look at the difference between those years in the year 1915 albert einstein published gravity in entirely new way using the general theory of relativity let's look into his gravity concept which is not the in NCRT syllabus but what did he say let's check it out for that let's search the page gravity in wikipedia so once you type the term or type the word gravity in google search and you just 
click the wikipedia page it comes this one no, but oh this is gravity 2013 film you want this one yeah look at the second paragraph in the gravity wikipedia page here right over here this paragraph is very important here it says gravity is the most accurately described by the general theory of relativity by albert einstein in 1915 which describes gravity is not as a force but as a consequence of the curvature of space-time caused by uneven distribution of mass which means gravitational force is not a force according to albert einstein it's not a force but it's actually the result of the geometry of the space or you can say it as the consequence of the curvature of space-time understood so this is what we should understand whenever we study the chapter gravitation we always go towards isaac newton okay and that was long back that concepts are changed now gravity is no more a force gravity is the result of the geometry in space so let's see how einstein's gravity works for that you have to consider a trampoline sheet or a rubber sheet or a bed sheet whatever and you put a heavy ball into it what you can see is that the space getting curved understood so you can see a curvature of the space right exactly say somewhere here you can see that the space is getting curved did you notice that so let's take the case of the sun and sun is definitely in the space and because of the extreme mass of the sun the space near the sun is curved which we cannot see because it goes to the higher dimension where we don't have access to it so once the planets are revolving around the sun what will happen let's see that once the planets are revolving around the sun for that you can take consider by throwing a marble okay by throwing a marble or a small ball towards the heavy ball which we have kept before you can see that marble p is revolving around that heavy ball it's not because of the gravitational force produced by the heavy ball but it is because of the curvature of space created by the heavy ball you can see the space is curved and into which our uh, you can see the marble ball is moving like that and if it is exactly if it is a frictionless bed sheet or trampoline sheet or a rubber sheet this small ball will keep on revolving keeps on revolving and that's exactly how planets are revolving around the sun it's not because of the force of gravity but it's because of the curvature in space created by the sun and these planets are actually falling into that curvature since there is no friction we, we are not seeing the earth is falling towards the sun because it's keep on revolving around the sun understood so that is exactly what einstein's gravity is explaining einstein's gravity never explained or never considered gravitation as a force but instead he treated as the curvature of the space understood the extreme applications of these einsteinian gravity you can see in the during the collision of black holes black holes means the dead stars let's see that too before concluding this here you can see two black holes merging towards each other and becoming a one big large black hole and during that process you can see the entire space is you know it's getting wiggled so the waves are passing the gravitational waves are passing through that space this is the real concept of gravity this is what exactly how you should look forward to gravitation understand because of this curvature in space created by these two gigantic black holes because of the immense mass the space itself is curved into which two black holes are coming together and once they combine into one single big black hole the waves are getting wiggled in the space and they are being passed to infinity understood so that is how gravitation works and this is almost a good simulation which you can 
um, you know, compare for gravitation, uh, gravitational waves, and that's exactly we found these gravitational finds later. And yes, Albert Einstein was the right person, and that doesn't mean Newton was wrong. We can say that Einstein was more correct than Isaac Newton. Okay, hope you understood the concept of gravitation. So, understand it's not a force, it's a geometry in space. Thank you.